Welcome back to the Offbit. Today we're going to be upgrading the hard drive in this Asus ZenBook UX32 VD. We are going from the original 500 gigabyte magnetic drive to the 240 gigabyte Western Digital Green SSD. So stick around and watch us refresh this older laptop with a new crisp SSD drive. The Aces ZenBook 32 VD started life as a fast, sleek and refined looking laptop. With its aluminium housing and its slim looks for the time and a lightweight of 1.45 kilos, the original specs for this ZenBook was 6GB of RAM of a DDR3, 4GB on board and 2GB on a separate stick. We're running the i5-3317U at 1.7GHz. Also comes with an NVIDIA GT620M comprising a 500 gig of magnetic storage originally and strangely enough it has a 24 gig of SSD by SanDisk on the motherboard which is merely enough to put a standard Windows 10 operating system on and then think about trying to run apps or programs on that comfortably yep that's not going to be a fun task so let's strip it down and fix that 500 gig magnetic drive with a crisp new and not expensive 240 gig SSD so we can put Windows 10 on that sucker instead. To open this Asus ZenBook, you will require a T5 Torx screwdriver. And for removal of the internal parts, you'll also need a small Phillips screwdriver. Thankfully, this laptop is one of the easier laptops to open once you have the right tools. Once you're ready to start, gently flip the laptop over on its top. Now we have got our hard drive ready to go, so let's crack into it. All the T5 Torx screws are basically placed around the edge of the casing and are very easy to find. Once all the screws are removed, the case should just easily slip off, exposing most of the components for serviceability. Now to remove the hard drive, we actually have to remove the battery. So first off, we'll start removing the battery. Using your small Phillips screwdriver, Go around the edge of the battery and just loosen all the screws until the battery becomes loose. We did not disconnect the battery, we just simply folded over and accessed the screws to the hard drive and removed them. There are four screws, two above and two below. Once they are removed, the hard drive simply slips out if you pushed out the speaker section. All that's left now is to remove the brackets that are connected to the hard drive and that's just another four screws. All we need to do now is basically put the brackets onto the SSD drive and then place it in the laptop and screw it in. Once this is done, basically we just reassemble the whole laptop, just how we disassembled it. If everything's gone well, we can put our Windows 10 USB install disk in and start installing. Firstly, we just checked if the disk picked up and we can see it, which is looking good. We also checked the booting preferences and try and boot off the USB stick. It sometimes can be a challenge in itself. The tool to make the USB installation of Windows 10 can be obtained from the Microsoft website. Now we install Windows 10, we just select the new drive and away we go. We speeded things up and skipped a bit but now we got Windows 10 installed. Now it's probably worth mentioning what sort of performance this CPU can do. The first thing you need to know about the CPU, the i5-3317U, is that it is classed as a low power CPU, using only a TDP of 17 watts. It is also a dual core CPU with hyperthreading, which will give us four threads, and which it does. Now to give us some sort of idea of metrics, we did run Cinebench R15, just to show you the performance of this CPU. As we can see that our CPU is slower than a Core 2 Quad Q6600, and it's also slower than the i5-2520M, which are both in generations before this CPU. But both those CPUs use a stack more power. One of them is a desktop CPU, the other is a standard laptop CPU. 
our i5 3317U wasn't too far off the Q6600. And that's not a bad performance figure. For doing desktop applications and basic gaming, that is definitely possible with this CPU and the Q6600. The power saving is really the big beneficiary of this CPU. To add to the power saving, we added a brand new SSD hard drive, and that's gonna save us a heap of power with no spinning motors and taking less time to do the data work. Also to me, putting an SSD in any system is a no-brainer, but it's even more advantageous for a laptop system with less power consumption giving a better battery life. The drive also has a lot more shock resistance, having no moving parts or fragile heads possibly slap the platters of the disc in a drop collision or a simple shunt collision, which makes the SSD an obvious choice for any laptop in my books. Now, as the laptop in whole, I really do like this laptop. It's light and it looks great. The keys feel good. It also has backlit keys, which is handy in the dark. The construction feels solid enough. Though the number crunching performance on this CPU is probably a little bit on the slower side for my liking. But as we said, for most of the usual tasks you majoritively would do on a laptop, it's all right. So other than being a little bit slow on the number crunchiness, it's a good laptop for its time and still does all right today. Well, that's all we got today for the off bit. We'd like to thank all our subscribers and viewers for your support. Please, if you like this video, hit that like. If you have not subscribed and you do enjoy our content, please hit that subscribe button. And finally, please feel free to always leave any comments. Thanks once again, and we'll catch all you guys next time on The Offbit.